good evening uh, and welcome uh, to the regular Board of Education meeting. Today is Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. First off, I'd like to welcome those who are joining us uh, via Zoom, one of whom is Board Member Donna Nolan, who is driving back from the boys lacrosse game down in, in Weston. And I think Donna's actually going to be driving straight here and uh, <laughs> assuming her seat next to Dr. Grossman. So uh, please don't let that interrupt you if you are in the middle of presenting or anything. So Donna will be coming. Uh, also arriving a little bit later will be our student representative, Jacob Scotto, who is playing in a semifinal tennis match um, at the moment, just down the road. Um, and they got a little late start due to the rain, so he may be coming a little wet, um, perhaps uh, in his uniform still, so if, please don't let that distract you either. Uh, so welcome to our robotics team, the Granby Grunts. Uh, we're very excited to have you here with us this evening uh, to see you, and you brought the robot, which I'm excited. I almost said, I hope they bring the, the robot, and so I'm excited to see it in action tonight. Um, and you'll be sharing a little bit about the program and uh, about your recent competitions as well. So as we are nearing the end of the year, um, I think it's eight days, you said, Tess, earlier? Eight days of school remain. Um, I do love the end of the year, uh, not because it marks the end, but because it gives us a chance to really celebrate all that has been achieved and accomplished this, in this year. Uh, thank you to the Granby community for the outpouring of support shown last week at our Senior Scholarship and Awards Night. Uh, we truly do live in a special place, as, as was shown by so many in our community who were proud to learn about and invest in our students. So thank you to the community for showing up for that and supporting our students. The end of the year also brings multiple events, and with that, lots of planning and logistics, coordination, and probably headaches. Um, there's concerts, field days, field trips, special celebrations in the classroom. Thank you to our teachers and staff who make these events happen. Our office administrators take on a bit heavier of a load this time of year, so thank you to all of them for ensuring that things run smoothly. Additionally, our facility staff does an outstanding job preparing our schools for these events, particularly for our high school graduation. They also do a ton of work over the summer, so a big thank you to them as well. Uh, and with that, Dr. Grossman, I will turn it over to you for superintendent announcements. Super, thank you, Mrs. Straw. Good evening and welcome to everyone. Great to see our Granby Grunts robotics team and their advisors here this this evening we're, we're very excited to see you present we also want to thank mr lambert our director of technology for being here this evening who will be pro providing his annual technology report as mrs Strahl said we have a lot of events that have been happening we had our 25 year in retirement luncheon today where we honored our retirees one of them is here this evening Mrs. Bastians, <laughs> Mrs. Bastians, Karen Borgman, Marie Caruso, Michelle Dabchek, Jane Sullivan, and Lisa Sweeney. Very excited for them and, and bittersweet for us. 25-year employees and boardmen, Marie Caruso and Don Scott, uh, legacy people that have been here for 25 uh, years and just, just a wonderful thing. And as I mentioned, Marie Caruso is also retiring. Not present today, but also retiring are Ellen Buda, Brenda Miller, and Mark Neary, our band director. And 25-year employees that were not able to attend were John Bukowski and Karen Neff. And speaking of Mr. Neary, we want to congratulate Mr. Neary and our high school band for marching in the Memorial Day Parade after a year's leave of absence. So that's just wonderful. I sit here today just thinking, it, 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 every day just keeps flowing into another, and I'm like, wow, seven days, approximately seven days from now, we'll be meeting on, <coughs> on a bright sunny day on the Granby Memorial High School Stadium field for graduation. It, it, it just dawned upon me that we're almost seven days away from that, so that, that's really exciting, and one of the new things that I know Mr. Dunn is working on is having our seniors actually go back this year to the elementary schools and do a cap and gown parade. Something that Mrs. Parsons and I were speaking about and then when I met with all the seniors, it came up in one of the classrooms and I ran down to Mr. Dunn and I said, they're coming because they want to do it. So I, I congratulate Mr. Dunn for trying to put that together and that looks like that's gonna happen next Wednesday, Mr. Dunn, is yes. that it? Yeah. Yeah, after the rehearsal, the, any student that wants, they're going to be able to go down to the primary school and 
Wells Road Intermediate School and walked the hallways. And, and a lot of them mentioned when I met with them, the teachers that they had. So that, that'll be exciting for them. There is a middle school chorus concert tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium and a middle school spring flame dance, which was canceled a few weeks ago, is this Friday night at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the middle school gym. Our summer enrichment program opportunities are being advertised and will run July 5th through July 29th. I would encourage any families that are watching this video to register their children for summer enrichment opportunities. Important dates, our eighth grade moving up ceremony, June 7th, 6 p.m. They'll be on the turf field at Grand Bay Memorial High School. Graduation, as I mentioned, June 9th at 5.30 p.m. If there's any board members who would like tickets, please let Linda Powell know. Last day of school, June 13th is our last day of school, Monday, June 13th. And I want to remind the Board of Ed that our Board of Ed retreat is Monday, August 29th. We'll be sending out a schedule in, in the summer. And our next regularly scheduled board meeting is Wednesday, June 15th. I'll take any questions at the superintendent's office. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. I am so excited to hear about this um, graduation walk through the hallways. So thank you, Dr. Mr. Dunn, for um, helping coordinate that because that's going to be exciting for our young students as well as for those who are graduating. <coughs> Uh, to go back and walk those halls that they have walked before. Any questions or comments for Dr. Grossman? No? Okay. We'll move on to Assistant Superintendent's report, Jennifer Parsons. Good evening, everyone. I wanted to provide a little bit of an update on the professional learning that we had on Friday. So on Friday, while um, hopefully our community and our students were ex enjoying an extended Memorial Day weekend, um, our teachers were hard at work on um, with their professional learning and their colleagues collaborating throughout the day. Uh, one of the things that was very exciting is that for the first time in many, many years, uh, we initiated uh, vertical teaming on Friday. So we had representatives from all different grade levels come together and work, to, uh, work in content-specific teams, so for example, social studies or science or math, wellness, um, and they worked with their colleagues who teach the same content area at all of the different ages. And so this was really exciting. It's the first of many meetings to come, and our, a lot of our curriculum work and review will happen in these meetings moving forward, which we hope to hold at least two or three times a year. Um, uh, this was the first meeting. So the two goals for that meeting on Friday were to develop a community within that content area, come up with working agreements, as well as to look at the vision of the graduate that the board approved in September and determine which elements and indicators within the vision of the graduate most appropriately fit within each content area. Um, what they don't know yet is that we'll be um, taking those votes forward and really divvying it up across all of the different content areas. So um, which elements of the vision of the graduate will live in which content area. Um, they will all be found throughout, but we want each content area to really focus in on a few. So in addition to that, um, teams had time with their building level teams and we um, also completed some social emotional training around the areas of suicide prevention for our middle school staff, which means that all of our middle school and high school staff have been trained, which is extremely important, um, in addition to um, working with our elementary students. So one of the other updates I wanted to provide is that we are concluding our committee work for the year. We have finished our educator development committee for the year, our STEAM committee, our social emotional learning committee, and uh, last Wednesday night we had our last equity, Granby equity team meeting for the year. I look forward to on the 15th presenting to you our anti-bias, anti-racism plan and an update on the work of the year. But I did want to let you know that we spent time reflecting and processing through all of the things we've accomplished. And some of the biggest accomplishments shared by the team were the work that we have done with our Heritage Months this year in acknowledging um, Black History Month and um, Asian American Pacific Islander Month and practices that we have um, in addition to, to several other months. So that, that's just a representative sample in the work we've been doing in our libraries and throughout the community. 
So that was one of them, as well as really be having a great collaboration with all of the agencies in town. So those are a couple of our biggest achievements. And we also talked about what we'd like to change moving forward. So that will all be part of what I share um, in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, but besides that, we're really looking forward to planning already for next year. Uh, we have one last district leadership team meeting on Monday. That involves all of our content area specialists, our department chairs, <coughs> our administrative team coming together to action plan and our administrative retreat. We uh, spend two days together in June, really reflecting on what went well this year and planning actively for next year. So we like to leave everyone with, with thoughts for, for the beach, right? <laughs> or, or their nice long walks or leisurely morning coffees. So um, we will be busy planning moving forward. Any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Parsons. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Assistant Superintendent? Great. No? No? Oh, you looked like you were ready to go. You're good. No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. No problem. Okay. I know we're without Jacob. Um, Tess, are you okay to do the report on your own? Okay. <coughs> we, knew, we knew he might be late, so we'll move on to the student representative reports. And we do want to recognize Jacob later, so when he, I'm hoping he's able to join us later. So, because this is technically the last meeting of the year for our student reps, and Jacob, of course, is graduating. So, Tess, take it away. Um, good evening, everybody. I will start with some updates on athletics. So our girls lacrosse team currently has a record of 13 to 5 and will be moving on to their next state's game this Friday against New Fairfield. Boys lacrosse has a record now of 7 to 10 after a sad loss today, which finished off their season. Girls tennis had their second state's game today and boys tennis is currently in their second state's game as of right now. Golf had a match today and girls track had a meet yesterday. Boys track will have a meet Thursday, and baseball finished their season with a 9-11 to record yesterday. But other than athletics, I did get the honor of going to the retirement luncheon today, and it was a really great experience, and I had a really good time, and I'm appreciative of that. And um, I can speak on behalf of some seniors that they're very much so looking forward to the walk through all the schools. A lot of them have been talking about it, and especially my sister and like my senior friends are very much so looking forward to it, so thank you. Thank you, Tess. Any are, uh, exams are next week? Yes. So senior exams started today. Okay. So the schedule's a little it's a little it's a little confusing. Yep. But right. next week is underclassmen finals. Right. Well, good luck if you're Thank taking you. any. Finals. I only have one. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for Tess? We are going in record time tonight. This is great. <laughs> Excellent. So now it's your turn. So I'm going to turn this over to the robotics team. Um, is there anyone who's introducing Mr. Myers? Are you introducing? They're going to introduce themselves. They're going to introduce themselves. Okay. And thank you again, Ms. Bastiance. I know that this has been, uh, you've been the advisor for this group for many years. So thank you for, for that. Come on up, guys. Right. Come right over. So, uh, hi there, we're the Granby Grunts from uh, a first robotics team from high school here. Uh, I'm Ellie Hosack, uh, this is my third year on the Grunts. I'm Charlie Crew, this is my first year on the Grunts. My name is Noah Collins, this is my first year on the Grunts. My name is Pryor Waskin, and I have been part of the Grunts for all four years of high school. I'm Eric Myers, and this is my first year on the Grunts. I'm Keenan Woods, this is also my first year on the Grunts. All right, so first things first. What is first? <laughs> the, the name stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. It is an organization that was founded in 1989 by inventor and philanthropist Dean Kamen and MIT professor Woody Flowers. It was founded to bring like-minded students together to cultivate interest in the STEM fields. And today there are, over one, there are thousands of teams in over 80 countries across the world. The main mantra of first is gracious professionalism, which promotes um, Which, which encourages high quality work and also emphasizes values of others in the community. But you might be wondering, why first? What makes this program so special? And why do we all love it so much? And that's because FIRST Robotics opens the door to a world of opportunities. You learn soft skills like leadership in your field of interest, teamwork both within your team and with other teams, and also 
innovation and creative problem solving to a brand new challenge every single year. But in addition to those soft skills, you get hard skills and real professional experiences in the careers of engineering, computer science, and business, and you learn problem solving skills that you can use no matter what career you go into. First also opens doors through things like scholarships. There are over $80 million worth of scholarships available to FIRST members and FIRST alumni every single year. And finally, it's the last sport where everybody can go pro. <laughs> right? Because everybody up here, they can continue their FIRST career into their professional career. It's, it's incredible. We were founded in 2009 by Don Rethke, aka Dr. Flush, creator of the space life support and the toilets on the space station and shuttles. We went to Worlds 2015 at St. Louis, 2019 at Detroit, and we qualified this year. Each year we build a different robot depending on the competition. Once we're done building the robot, we take it to the competition all over New England. So our team is organized just like a business. So we're divided into different focus groups. That includes design and fabrication, um, electrical and programming, administrative, media, scouting, and strategy. And unlike a normal business, each of our members can learn any of these focus groups, and most of them learn at least one or two. We also work like a business in the fact that we work on a schedule that we determine at the beginning of each season. And finally, like a sport, we have our coaches, our wonderful <coughs> mentors, some of which are here today. And they teach us all the necessary skills to build, program, design, do everything with this robot. And I really want to emphasize that they teach us the skills. The mentors aren't the ones building and programming this robot, we are. Um, so we wanted to sort of give an overview of what a typical season might look like for us. Um, so it's broken into a couple different sections. Uh, our pre-season period from the beginning of the school year through the beginning of January. Um, and then the first week of January, um, we have an, uh, an international event called Kickoff, during which the uh, game, the task we're going to be completing for the year is unveiled to every first team at the same time. Um, that's followed by six weeks of a build season during which we have to design, build, and program the robot. Um, and then uh, about another six to eight weeks of competitions, um, concluding with a, a, a possibly advancing to a world championship. This year it's gonna be in Houston. Um, and then uh, that's uh, usually the second, or, or second to last uh, week of April. And then for the rest of the year, we're going to continue um, bringing the robot around through the community to events like this um, and uh, just working on, on preparing for the next season. So the real meat and potatoes of robotics is this right here, which is our build season. Every year in early January, there is what we call a kickoff event where the game that we have to compete in what challenges we have to overcome, what game pieces we have to move around, how it's scored, is revealed at the exact same time across the world. This is, you know, hundreds of thousands of nerds watching this. <laughs> like, yes, what's, what's gonna happen this time? And then clock starts ticking. We have six weeks to design, build, program, wire, and test this robot. And we do a lot of testing and tweaking throughout the season. You can imagine that the design that we have right here is not the same design we came up with at the beginning of the season. And it's not even the same design we had at the end of the first competition. We're constantly <coughs> um, So now, uh, the competitions themselves, um, uh, so at, at, the, at the end of our build season, um, we take the robot to two or three qualifier uh, regional events, um, which um, at the end of those, we might advance to a district championship, and then from there, possibly the world championship. Um, so a typical regional event um, 
consists of about 40 teams and roughly 85, uh, 80 qualifier matches. Um, during those qualifier matches, uh, alliances are randomly selected. There are three teams each, um, two alliances to a match. Um, and that determines your ranking within the event. Uh, after the qualifier matches uh, are the elimination rounds during which the top eight teams at an event can then select their alliance partners to move on to the elimination rounds um, to eventually crown an event winner. Um, during our qualifier events, there's other awards um, that can uh, impact your standing within the district. And every team is awarded district points based on their performance at the event um, to uh, determine who will advance to the district championship. Um, uh, um, sorry. Uh, the district championship event tends to be a little bit larger. Um, this year it was more like a double event. There were actually two competition fields and 80 teams, um, but they functioned about the same way. Uh, at that event, our points, were, our district points were doubled, and at the end of that event, um, it determined um, the 30, roughly 30 teams that would advance from New England to the World Championship. This year was one of the best for our team in the in its entire history. Our our season started on in early April at our first competition in Western New England University in Springfield, um, which we made it to semifinals on the fourth seeded alliance, beating the fifth seeded alliance, and we did fairly good there. But we had a lot of adjustments to make, a lot of um, repairs to do, and then a couple weeks later we came back at Hartford Public High School for our second qualifier, in which we did a lot better. We were third seeded overall and with our as captain of our alliance we made it to semifinals once again. And with that and how we did at Western New England, we had enough district points to qualify for New England district championships, which we were selected to be on six seeded alliance and made it to the semifinals once again, upsetting against all the third seeded alliance in quarterfinals in a double tiebreaker. At the end of the season, we were ranked 31st out of all 185 teams in New England, and we were awarded the Quality Award at the Hartford event, which, as first describes it, celebrates machine robustness and concept and fabrication. Building the robot is only part of their success, and the judges recognize them as a quality example. Like any sport, we have many ways to show our team spirit. We won the Spirit Award in four different competitions. We design buttons that change depending on what the robot is or what the competition is. We also have shirts, a flag, and a big golden wrench. <laughs> so throughout the year, we also have outreach events where we bring our robot and show it off, where we can promote STEAM in our community and also introduce students younger and also our age to the FIRST program. Our first one this year was at the Simsbury Fly-In in, in September, where we have our previous year's robot um, firing balls into the, um, for the kids to catch. And then also, in we don't have a picture of it up there, but in November or so, I believe, we gave a presentation to the Senior Men's Breakfast Club. And then later, in a couple weeks ago in May, we were at Kelly Lane for our STEAM night, where we showed off our robot to the Kelly Lane students, as well as we have, in the, in the upper photo, we have had these little robots that were made of toothbrush parts called bristlebots for them to build and race each other. And then just two days ago, we were in the Memorial Day Parade and we were shooting our cargo into the hoop on our, you know, on our float as we drove down the road. Um, so uh, we've done a lot of talking about uh, FIRST and, and our season so far, but I um, wanted to share with you a moment from our district championship here. Um, so at the end of uh, the end of a match, um, sometimes it's not always clear at first who might won, uh, who might have won, and this was at the end of that double tiebreaker. Um, uh, so I think you can play it. The final score of five goal differential.
know, these are these are super high energy events, and um, you know, you can see we, we have you know tons of tons of uh, fans out in the stands um, at every event. Um, and you know, it's just everybody is super enthusiastic. We, we all love to be there, and and uh, um, you know, it's it's times like these that that uh, you know we really feel great. But throughout the whole season, we get all kinds of experiences that that really just make it worth it. So, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time um, and for Rambi's continued support of, of the program. Are there uh, any questions that you guys have for us? Well, thank you very much. I can bet that there are a lot of questions, but I have to tell you, this was live streamed this year, some of your competition, and mm -hmm. I watched some of it, and it is so exciting. I mean, that energy is absolutely the energy that you feel coming through. I had no idea what I was watching, really, but I can figure <laughs> out. I figured it out after a while. But then I was watching your, your robot, it's shooting the ball, and the next thing I know, it's disappeared, and it's doing like the, the monkey bar thing or something? Did, was I watching the right thing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but it was so exciting. And I, um, I'm so glad to see the, the robot here. I'm so glad to hear from all of you. That timeline was so helpful for me just to kind of visualize how this, how this process is, is taken and, how it, and what undergoes to, to have that final competition. Um, to not know what you're doing until that, what do they call it, the kickoff? Yeah until kickoff, and then you literally have six weeks, so that's gotta be intense. Okay, yeah, so. Um, and then you've gotta get to these competitions, the robot may break, it may need to be tweaked, your software may crash on you, which, um, so it's awesome, it's so exciting to me. Um, question, uh, did you all have different roles on the team, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Tell um, me what that is, tell me what each of you did. Sure, yeah, so uh, this year I, I kind of functioned as sort of a team captain, so I handled a lot of the administrative things that, that needed to be completed, um, our social media presence, um, sending out emails, uh, but I also uh, worked a lot on the electrical system of the robot, I was doing a lot of the wiring and uh, any of the electronics that, that needed to be done. Um, and also, you know, throughout the season I was passing that knowledge on, um, Getting you know, getting our, our new first year members um, you know ready for the season. And Ellie, what year are you a junior? I'm a junior. You're a junior. Okay. Um, I was part of the fabrication team. I was also team spirit captain, and I drove the robot. Th this year, I was a part of the. Well, this is my first year on the team, so I was I was a part. Of, I mainly did programming during build season, and I was just starting to learn the ropes there. And then during. During competitions, I was a technician, which means I got the robot on and off the field, made sure it was ready to go, and um, make sure it was all working. Um, during the build season, I was the programming lead, and obviously that title doesn't just go away at competitions, but at competitions, I focused on being the coach, so I was one of the people who went out and talked to our alliance teams and determined what strategy we should use for our matches. And so. Um, during build season, I was another programmer, so worked with Prior and Noah on getting the robot to run off code. And also, during the events, I also drive, drive the robot. Um, I make it move, whereas he operates all the different systems on the robot. I was the human player. You might not have seen it from the live stream cameras, but I was in one corner of the field where there is an opening, and if balls roll out of the field, I put them back on the field. And at the beginning of the match, during Autonomous, when the robot is driven by itself through a pre-planned code, I have one chance to make a shot. This, that's 25 feet away into that hoop you saw, and over my entire career, I made five shots. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the other piece I wanted to ask you, thank you, because how many of you, prior to your senior, or any of you seniors, no? So, are you the only one that we're losing next year? Yep. It's a big loss, I know. <laughs> so, but, but, okay. Um, would you introduce us to your mentors, please? Yes. Um, first things first, we have our founder, Dr. Flush. Excellent. Thank you. And you've done this how many years, Dr. Flush, since then? I've been doing 25 years totally with Eve, a Rachel from high school, and I started this team about 2009. Thank you. Thank you. Another one of our. <laughs> Another one of our lead mentors, uh, Mr. Puskar. Uh, I'm Puskar, and I've been doing this since 2009. Thank you. 
and then our wonderful teacher, you know, faculty representative, Ms. Bastians. Thank you. Mark Bastians, um, with, along with Dr. Flash and Karen Kemp, uh, we've been with the program since the start in 2009. And then a couple of new faces for this year, um, Mr. Myers and Mr. Coffin. Thank you all for your time because I know, I mean, when we're talking about the students doing all this work for six weeks and building and going to the competition, we know that's your time as well. So thank you very much for, for doing that and supporting our students uh, with that. And the results speak for themselves uh, for sure. So can I'll, I don't want to hog the stage. Would anyone else like to ask questions or provide comments? Yeah. So um, it, you mentioned early on about strategy and you have some and, and alliances so i was just curious uh, who are the scouts among you and how did you use strategy to form your alliances and how did you capitalize on that during the competition um so uh, every year um you know I've, some years the team is a little bit larger this year it's um not much not much more than what we've got here tonight um, everybody on the team is going to have to do some amount of scouting, um, whether it's up in the stands with the audience, just watching matches, um, sort of getting a feel for uh, what other robots can do, or going around to other teams in our work area um, to just uh, get the lay of the land and figure out who, uh, who we've got there. Um, we, we tend to uh, just start with, start with the basics. What can every robot do in theory? and then we use um, some data collected from the matches, different scores, um, to uh, rank teams based on what we're looking for. Um, when we reach the playoffs, alliances should be composed of robots that complement each other well, rather than all that all do the same thing. So our robot um, shot for the high hoop um, and had a high bar climb. We might be looking for a robot that can um, climb to the bar below us so we're not getting in the way of them and maybe we'll aim for the, the, the uh, low hoop. Um, you know, throughout the competition we'll, we'll get a feel for, for what robots do different things well um, and that helps us to form our alliances. Brian, anything else? And I just want to say that before each of our matches we always go to our alliance partners and based on the scouting that we have done Prior to that, we determined the best strategy for that specific match, rather than just thinking about the playoffs. Yeah. And, and then just two other quick questions: Do you keep an engineering journal um, as part of your build pro or building and <coughs> strategies? And <coughs> um, this year, we we didn't uh, maintain any kind of a formal engineering journal. Um, we document. Um, the entire process, uh, mostly in photos, videos, and then our engineering drawings. Um, but uh, you know, most years we'll have a written theory of operations and um, and uh, uh, you know more more document more written documentation on on the robot itself. Because I'm thinking that well, you're only losing once uh, you only have one senior, but you have a great opportunity to kind of drum up. Some, some new members mm -hmm. in the upcoming freshman class and even among your existing classes. Um, so maybe um, keeping some of that you know, historical knowledge and being able to kind of build, from, build your program from there is really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you, gentlemen, you did a great job and really, really proud of the work that you did and your enthusiasm is infectious, it really is. <laughs> Makes me want to go build something. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stork, can I just of add course, something yeah, real please. quick? So, um, I got a lot to say about this. Group, <laughs> but I'm going to try to keep it brief. We have Mrs. Bostance, who's our school advisor, who, who's leaving. And we've spent the year really trying to figure out the, the transition of, of how this is going to work. And even before I was named the superintendent in the Grand Public Schools, my own kids got to go through the robot and the Sims very flying because it's something that you've been doing year after year. And they actually got to do it this past year in September. The, the reason that I bring it up 
is I can't think of an organization that we have within the Grammy Public Schools that competes, but then does as much community outreach as this group. And it's pretty impressive what they're doing, just the, the way that they're talking and presenting. But what's more impressive is the community outreach that you do. And what we have done, and we've made a commitment, this administrative team and Mr. Don and I have met with Mrs. Bostance and the, the advisors to really plan forward for you. So from a financial standpoint, we know we're all set to roll for next year that we know that there's a commitment that we're going to go out and try to fundraise and do things. But we want the focus to be exactly what you're talking about, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Weber, is to get more kids mm -hmm. involved in this and to really go after our current eighth grade students and get our ninth grade so we can rebuild. Because one of the things that I'm, and I, I forget a lot of things, but I remember some things too. <laughs> it comes with age, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the pep rally this year outside on the field and when they introduced this team there was a young man who was screaming robotics grunts grunts and we're going to the world championships we're going to make the world championships that was you <laughs> <laughs> that was my first real experience to pride <laughs> my point is there's enthusiasm about this group there's parent support. We have an advisor in place. And Mrs. Bassiens has even offered to provide <coughs> our students next year to make sure we're ready to roll. So you have the commitment from this administration, and I know this board, and I know from your advisors because I got to meet with them, that there's a commitment to you to make this go. We need the commitment from you to keep this going and get those younger students involved and let's get it even bigger. That, how cool would it be to get our middle school back to bringing the first robotics program with the Lego robotics and bringing that back? So we have some work to do, and we're gonna count on you to do that. But out of my office, I, I congratulate you for everything that you're doing and for the advisors who I got to meet in, in the past few weeks. I, I thank you um, for the work. And one of the first people that I ever met and Grammy was Mr. Flush. Um, <laughs> he's a pride and joy of the little body to me. So thank you, Mr. Flush. Of course. Thank you. Anything else? From just a quick yes, question please. And um, I just want to say we have so many cool things coming through these doors, and it's always like the end product. We're excited to see your robot. So excited to see. But um, your level of enthusiasm was really awesome. Like, you guys presented so well. I mean, I see everybody come to the stage, myself included, a little bit nervous and timid. And you guys started talking, and you could just see your pride shining through. So like, that was very rewarding to see. Um, and my question is, just out of curiosity, as far as building this, do you keep each robot every year? And, or do you, once you get the new assignment, do you take it apart and utilize the old pieces? I'm just kind of curious what that process looks like. So very often we do take apart our robots at the end of each year, but it has been sort of a tradition that every robot that does especially well, we try to keep together as a sort of memento. So the robot from my freshman year um, is still together. That was the last team that went to Worlds, and that was in, uh, that was in Detroit. And that robot is still together, but the robot in the years between that, it did all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious, because I know you put so much work into it, but if you also want to utilize it, so thank you very much, appreciate that. I have a couple questions. Of course. Um, is it, this might be for Jordan, but is it this fully funded by the district, or is there a booster club, or? No, so uh, as I was mentioning, there, this is partly funded by the district. We have uh, the advisor is in the budget. There is, um, Two or three thousand dollars in the budget for transportation. Approximately, it costs about fourteen thousand dollars each year to get this to roll. That's not including the cost if you make it to Worlds and have to get planes and different ways to get the robotics. So, when I say that this is a group that tries to raise money also to work within this program to make it work, they received grants 
from uh, people, private donations. So this is something that we spoke about as a, a team to say, what can we do next year to build that capacity to make a little bit more money? Uh, but I'm also looking at maybe, as I said, put a little bit more money each year in, in our budget to support this because I look at this not only as a team, but actually a co-curricular program within our academic uh, program. Also, I just view it a little bit different. Uh, but this is something that we need to work together to make sure, and one of the commitments that I had was to make sure that next year, the focus wasn't gonna be on money, that we have enough money based upon what was raised in uh, funds that they had in the account and what we added in, in another account to make this go since we didn't do everything that we were planning on this year. I know in my previous life, I know Pratt gave some pretty generous grants. Correct, and we spoke about yeah. that with matching yeah. uh, grants here. It had some great ideas to uh, get us on a list with some companies that do matching grants. So those are the things that we gotta work on um, next year, and I know this group is uh, committed to that, and there was a company that gave two or $3,000 this year, Mrs. Bostian. Yeah, uh, now it's Raytheon, Raytheon. 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 some very positive news. We had been told that that was potentially going down and we actually got a notification that um, the level is going to go up by $500, mm -hmm. so it will be roughly $2,500 that we can apply for. <coughs> Well, just show them the video. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. It's a great night video. Yeah, it's people it's really throwing good. money. Um, do you guys have like a dedicated space, like a classroom, or like where, where do you build this? Um, yeah. So right right now we're we're kind of in between spaces. Um, previously, our our home base has been the wood shop at at the high school, um, and we've been there since the beginning. Um, obviously, with the with the renovation and uh, the room getting a little smaller, we might be between a couple different spaces in the school. Um, currently, we're uh, uh, we're working out of the electronics lab upstairs, um, and you know, for for postseason activities, that's adequate. Um, but obviously, once we need to fabricate parts, for we'll probably be working back down in the wood shop again. So, related question: When you say fabricate. Uh, parts. So sure. the announcement comes in in January. Mm -hmm. Was it the kickoff? Yep. Yep. And then, can you cheat a little bit? Like, can you build a frame? <laughs> like, or are you really at ground zero and you have like no idea? <laughs> <laughs> um, Not that we condone cheating. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't like cheating. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'll, I'll rephrase, but can you anticipate like a basic frame or are you really starting from, I have no idea what our robot's going to be asked to do? Sure. Go for it. The short answer is no. <laughs> we have no clue what the game will be and what sort of drivetrain or mechanisms there that we will need. So it can... There was one year where we were picking up gears off the floor. There was one year, or this year, where we were shooting balls. There were discs that we had to pick up that had little, like, uh, Velcro around the edges. So we have no clue what the best way to tackle it would be. And really, trying to guess it is, it has not ever really worked out well for anyone. <laughs> Um, additionally, um, in the program rules, um, teams are actually forbidden from using uh, mechanisms fabricated in previous years um, or prior to kickoff. Um, that said, uh, FIRST does offer um, sort of like a, a base drivetrain that's just our, our um, you know, just the wheels and belts and gearboxes. Um, but beyond that, um, everything else has been designed and fabricated uh, in-house. Yeah. Are any of you thinking about maybe following up with this, like, uh, you know, in, in college? Um, I am going to WPI for mechanical engineering in the fall. And one of, actually, the driving factors of me going to WPI is because they, uh, they are still heavily involved in FIRST. So there are competitions that are held at that college, and then there's also a very good robotics program at that college that I hope to sort of sneak into a little. <laughs> Take a couple of classes. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's really awesome. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to pipe in real quick. 
Um, it's so amazing to see you guys here. This program is, is fantastic, and I, I love it when we have these co-curricular programs that really enhance and build upon things that you're learning in the classroom. So I'm so excited. I was going to ask that as well, what future plans were, or what it is about um, uh, being on the Grand Beak Runs that you feel has maybe helped you in some of those soft skills that you talked about. So are there certain aspects of the Grand Beak Runs that you think have really brought out certain parts of you or helped you develop in certain ways? You know, for, for myself, um, uh, you know, I, I was not a particularly outgoing person at the beginning of middle school. Uh, I participated on, uh, on the middle school robotics team, the uh, uh, first tech challenge teams. Um, and, you know, even with, with a smaller program like that, it was still, um, you know, it was, it was a huge help to me just to, just to be in a, in a space with, with other people, um, like-minded people, and I really I think the, the majority of my social skills developed uh, through the first program, and, and especially now. Um, you know, at, uh, within an event, um, you know, you're going to be interacting with, with so many different people, um, event judges, uh, just other teams, um, sharing ideas, working on strategy, whatever it is. And you know, it, it's, um, you know not, it's not just at the events that we build these soft skills. Um, obviously giving presentations like this um, are a big help. And then also throughout our season, uh, we might um, visit with other first teams. Um, we've uh, we visited uh, Enrico Fermi High School. Uh, Buzz Robotics there has a uh, um, uh, has a, a half playing field set up that we can test with, and it's been great to great to visit and, and meet some other uh, meet some other teams in the area. Anything else? Thank you. I just want to say really fast. Um, this stuff just always really impresses me. Most days, I don't know how to turn my phone on and off. <laughs> my Chromebook, I just sit there like slamming the on button. So I actually like really don't understand how you do this, like it's really impressive to me and I also want to say you all are really well spoken and I think your public speaking skills are impeccable. Thank you. Well said, Tess. So. Yeah. <laughs> well you make us all very proud, so thank yes. you for um, all your hard work, all your dedication to this. I know, um, you know, things like this don't just happen overnight. Um, you face challenges and obstacles and ups and downs. Um, but you do need to persevere, and um, and I love that it's the kind of thing that you take your to your competitions, and you have to you really you have to tweak it after, don't you? You have to make adjustments. You have to, and it's not just the physical robot; it's with the programming as well. I'm assuming. So, um, kudos to all of you for doing such a wonderful job. Many thanks again to our mentors because, like I said earlier, I know it's not just a couple hours here and there. Um, it is a um, weeks long uh, commitment that takes a lot of your weekend time as well I'm sure so thank you um, and I look forward to see what you guys do next year so prior you better come back down from yeah. the PI <laughs> to cheer these guys on so um, thank you all for being here one last thing we did bring a couple of our pins if anybody would oh, be interested yeah, 100%, yes. yes and I do know you need a couple minutes to uh, to move out is that yes how do you up. move this thing is uh, it, do you have a trailer you get a grunts trailer oh, it is out of the nice yeah. thank you thank you so much yeah great job can I take two for an eight-year-old and a seven-year-old oh, <laughs> thank you oh, I know thank you. <laughs> you'll notice the uh, the hooks behind our logo are actually Thank you. the same as the hooks that are on the robot itself. So we designed these pins with our specific year's robot in mind. Is the name of it Rapid React or Candy Cane or what is the program? The name of the game is Rapid React. Okay. The name of our robot is Love it. Ah, and the, the, the grunts were named, the grunts the nickname for the military people. So the, it was an honor to the military people, the Granby Grunts. Has nothing to do with Dr. Flush. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So as um, as they're unloading, I have a public comment, but I'm just going to stall a little bit. Um, actually, just Jacob, I'm going to ask you. Thumbs up, thumbs down. They called the match off for rain. Um, so last we left off, we were down 2-3 overall. Um, there are two matches still on the courts. One of them was my own match, where uh, we're up one set, so I just need to win one more set to win our match. And then 
The other match that's still on is singles four, which is currently on their third set and is tied 2 2 in game. So it could right not now? be any closer. No, they got so called, off too. called off. So they, the Stonington will be coming back tomorrow morning to finish the game. And then if we win that match, then we're playing tomorrow afternoon as well. Oh, excellent. Wow. Well, good, good luck. Yeah. I'm sorry you got called off. I'm glad you got started, but good luck. Um, and hopefully we'll be getting updates um, tomorrow that we can share. So thanks. Thanks so much. So with that, um, we will move on to public comment. Um, I know we have some folks in-house here. Uh, so I always open up to people who are here in person. Uh, and then turn it over to those who are joining us via Zoom. I know we have a couple people on Zoom, so if you would like to make public comment, please raise your hand or somehow identify that you would like to make public comment. I'll make a call for those in person first. Okay, I think, I think you're leaving. I don't think you're coming up to public comment, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'll make a last call for public comment for those of you who are in person. And I'll turn it over to Zoom. Do we have anyone on Zoom who would like to make public comment? Looks like John is shaking his head no, but I am going. Pardon me? No? No hands raised. Okay. Well, then I will thank you. I will move on to the consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll move that the Grand Bay Board of Education adopt the consent agenda. Thank you, Rosemary. Dave with a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, can you mark me as abstaining just because I missed that meeting? And uh, thank you, Whitney. Whitney's going to abstain. And Don, I don't know if you want to unmute and vote on that. Uh, I thanks. <laughs> thank you, Don. We'll put that into the record. Um, so we have um, six ayes and one abstention with Whitney. Thank you. Um, old business, there is none. And so we will move on. Please stop, Mr. Lambert. Um, we'll have Mr. John Lambert come up with the annual technology report. Good evening. Thanks for having me. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> we cleared the room, so. No buttons, no, no, no buttons. buttons. <laughs> I don't have any videos. I'm in big trouble. <laughs> But um, again, thanks for having me. It's been a really busy, challenging year, fun and exciting um, in technology, and it's gonna be a busy summer and a busy upcoming year as well. Um, so I just wanted to start off and kind of um, introduce the department. Um, there's me, I'm the director. Um, we have Frank Melanson, who is our full-time um, system support specialist. He's really our resident technology guru, works on everything from um, the municipal network, um, networks and wireless networks in all the schools, software support, users, broadcasting, you name it, he does it all. Um, he's fantastic. Um, our other full-time employee is John Croninger, who is our, um, our district technician, um, technology support specialist, and he's absolutely outstanding as well. Um, these guys go above and beyond in everything they do. John's here, in fact, tonight running the Zoom for the board meeting, um, which he's been covering events this past year for both the schools in town for us. So we really appreciate that, John. Sorry to call you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then our, our contracted services, we have Carolyn D. DeLore, who um, she's, she's part-time, but um, she really... Um, makes herself available um, throughout the week. Um, she handles our, our student information systems, um, state reporting, um, our payment systems. Um, she helps out um, also with tech support and our emergency notification system. And she's just great. And we also have Ed Lyman, um, who d does a lot with reporting and analytics um, for the schools and buildings and administrators. Um, and with that, um, these are our areas of support, um, technology infrastructure, all the technology in the schools and buildings, um, communications, administrative uh, systems, AV equipment, um, things like that. Um, we're also focused on security, both cyber and physical. Um, we're involved with the camera system and the lockdown systems in the schools, uh, building that out and maintaining that. 
um, along with the facilities department. Um, we work together on that. HVAC systems. Um, we maintain all the district software and information management as well as the website and instructional technology as well in the classrooms. Um, we work with the pupil service department on assistive technology and providing devices to um, students who need it or who, have, who need some type of um, assistive technology um, throughout their school career. Um, and then, of course, we, we uh, do a lot to uh, support the staff, students, uh, community, and special events. We've been involved in a lot of different special events, streaming and broadcasting, um, helping out there a, a lot. Um, a little about our support system. We, we have a work order system in place that's available to all the staff. We also have a group email address that anybody, anyone um, can email at any time and it goes to everyone in the department so that we can collaborate and continue to resolve issues. Um, and then they can also call if they have an emergency too. So that's kind of how it works. Um, John's our front line. John Croninger is our front line of defense out in the schools with break fix for technology. Um, but we also work closely with the media center specialists in each of the schools who help us maintain the technology and they're mainly involved with the instructional technology in each of the buildings. Um, so going into um, some highlights and from this year and initiatives for next year, um, as part of our um, technology refresh schedule, um, that's funded through the small capital that you see in the budget. Um, all of our equipment's on a replacement schedule. Um, and some of the big things that were replaced this year um, include the computers in the middle school tech ed lab, um, the high school electronics lab, and then for this upcoming year in the new budget, uh, we're scheduled to replace some of the computers in the school offices, um, the administrative systems, and um, also the media lab at the high school, which is currently being rebuilt. Um, we're gonna replace those computers <coughs> this summer. Um, and then in terms of um, networking and servers, uh, we have a few that have been replaced throughout the district this year, um, including our high school file and print server, and we upgraded our financial system server. Um, we also um, purchased some uh, Microsoft Surface tablets for the, the high school math department, um, and those seem to be working out very well. Um, we uh, also assembled and installed three um, 3D printers for the uh, technology um, education department at the high school, um, the media lab there. Um, we, we purchased some iPads, um, which are utilized each year by um, pupil services for assistive technology. And we'll do that again this year. Um, we have that money in the, in the budget. Um, we've kind of been moving away from classroom projectors uh, to interactive displays. Similar to this, they're a little larger. Um, they're touch screen and they really, um, they're bright. Um, the students can see them in the classroom. They have good sound systems and they are also interactive so they, they can, students can, can cast their devices to the screen and present. Um, so it's a great way uh, for them to collaborate in the learning environment. And um, they, they can also be centrally controlled and managed. So the tech department can adjust like power settings, shut them down when they need to be shut down, which is great. Um, so we had uh, 20 of those in the budget this year. And those 10 went to the high school, 10 went to the middle school. Uh, we applied for a grant for additional and we received it. So that was 24,000. Um, so that'll purchase a few extra this summer. And then we also have another 20 in the budget for next year, uh, which will also go to the high school and the middle school, trying to get through those buildings with the newer um, technology as we move forward. Um, Another major project we took on, which was actually a four-year project, was phone systems in each of the buildings have been replaced. This past year, we did um, Kelly Lane and Central Services 
and they're all of the same type, um, which wasn't the case before. So if you had to call uh, one school to another, you got, had to get an outside line and um, you know, pay for local service to do that, use up more telephone lines. So being all on the same platform, it's a unified system. So we were able to um, create extensions uh, within each school. So now from any building, you can, you can reach another school um, by dialing that four digit instead, extension instead of calling outside. It's also got um, some newer features built in, such as we can identify where a 911 call came from, from a classroom, and then that can send out a, a message to the administration saying, okay, somebody called 911 from this classroom in this area of the building. Um, so we, we've been um, trying to put things like that into place. We also utilized a technology called SIP trunks, which allows us to back up the phone system. Uh, right now we have a local phone carrier that we pay for for lines, um, and um, sometimes they go down. Um, so this is a way to back up that system, but it's also um, cheaper to utilize the SIP um, technology in terms of what it costs. It's basically free, free long distance. Um, so right now we're in a, a, a five-year contract with our local provider, um, but when we replaced uh, central services, uh, we were part of the town system. And when we um, got off of that, we were able to, to try this out. So now we're saving you know, a few hundred dollars a month um, in long distance service. And once our contract expires, uh, we'll be trying to implement that in the other schools and using our local provider as the failover versus the primary. Um, so that, that was a four year um, project that we're, we're still working on the configuration and setup of, but the equipment's all in place and we'll continue making improvements this upcoming year. Um, in, in terms of instructional technology and the one-to-one -one computing program, that's been going great. Um, each year, that's funded by quality and diversity, and then each year we've been replacing um, uh, some iPads at the primary school and third grade Chromebooks, uh, sixth grade Chromebooks, and ninth grade Chromebooks, and that seems to work out well. Um, in terms of, you know, they're getting three or four years out of the devices. Um, we buy them with a warranty and accidental damage, um, which hasn't been too out of control. Um, so that's been going very well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. John Croninger and the Media Center Specialists do a fantastic job of maintaining the devices, the inventory, issuing them to students, collecting them. So that's been going really well. Um, in terms of um, security and software, we're always focused on cybersecurity. Um, we're constantly filtering and monitoring the network and devices for threats and patching devices with the latest updates. We've also um, format and reinstall the software in a lot of the computers uh, throughout the cor course of the school year in the summer. <coughs> Excuse me. This year we've seen a number of um, spam, email, and phishing attempts, and we've been able to subvert those, but we're continuously uh, trying to help educate staff on cybersecurity through our, um, we have a mandatory video training that they have to take every year, and regular email communications on emerging threats. So that's been going okay, but it's always a challenge. We've seen a real uptick tick in those types of events this year. Um, and then we're just trying to make sure that our software and devices, network switches, wireless equipment uh, throughout the districts are up to date. Computers are patched with the latest updates. Um, we're focused on our backup is our primary defense, backup and disaster recovery planning for all our data and equipment, and trying to maintain a level of redundancy with all the equipment. So if something does break, then it's not an immediate emergency. We can't do that with everything, but we've been able to for for the most part with things, and it's worked out well. So a lot of times people don't even know that things are, something's down because it's it's got failover built into it. And we're gonna continue to, to do that. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we're, <clears throat> we're working with the facilities department on the district's um, 
camera, security camera system and the lockdown system. We've added and replaced a lot of the older cameras in the district. And then we have some new cameras in the small capital budget for this upcoming year. And we're working with facilities to upgrade some of the components of the lockdown system that are older. Um, there's newer and better technology. We've had a, not a lot of issues with it, but we have some issues with it that need to be resolved and, and we're continuing to work on that with the um, facil facilities department. Um, and then we're also um, going to be replacing the camera. There's camera viewing stations in each of the school offices and we're, we have money in the budget. Those are up for replacement. We're going to upgrade those. Um, we've added a little out of cameras over the years. so. Um, the machines really need to be upgraded to be able to view them um, more in real time. They're, they're a little bit laggy, so that'll be nice to do. Um, um, some of the um, ongoing projects that we're currently in the process of um, is we just finished updating our um, our website portal for employees so that they can access <coughs> their information online and that seems to be going well. Uh, we're in the process of replacing our human resources uh, records and application tracking program and we're bringing that into the current software we have for our student information system so <coughs> sort of everything will be in one place um, which is nice and we're also doing the same thing with our teacher evaluation system which um, went up enor enormously in price and we decided to go with a different product um, and that will also be under the same um, vendor that we're using for our student information system and we're hoping to have those two pieces up and running by July 1st. Um, <coughs> and then another software upgrade project we're working on is the um, replacement of our IEP system uh, for people services, the state has come out with their own. So we're in the process of moving all that data over to the new system and that has to be up and running by July 1st. We're supposed to be using it for IEPs beyond that. So that's another big one. And then, um, you know, we continue to work collaboratively with the town, um, just helping that, them out wherever we can, um, covering, John's been covering for some of their events and um, we'll continue to do that over the, the upcoming year. Um, and that's, that's, those are the major projects that we have going on right now. There's a lot more, but um, you probably don't near, need to know about everything. So, um, and then just some emerging, emerging technologies that we're seeing, um, just more utilization of cloud-based software, and products, um, the kids are all using um, Google Workspace, and Google Apps um, on their Chromebooks um, out in the schools. Just seeing a lot more of artificial intelligence built into the software um, that helps with assessment and learning analytics. Um, and then um, a little bit more of blended and hybrid courses, um, especially through the pandemic. So. That's, that's kind of all I have for you. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, so my question was actually kind of aimed at that emerging technologies. I mean, technology, and I, I don't understand it as clearly as well as you do, um, but it seems like it's, it's rapidly changing and constantly changing and advancing. Um, so how do we, how do we, how do we keep up? You know, it just, I mean, it's, it's gotta be a constant kind of review. Um, well, I don't know. That's why I'm. Yeah. yeah I mean, we we collaborate with other school districts, so we kind of we get an idea of what's coming. Um, but in and in terms of uh, the employees that we have, they're just they're constantly learning. Yeah. Because it's always changing. I'm constantly learning, and and they're really good at staying on top of it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. And I'm gonna, just going to ask a question because I'm the past two years have. Worked clearly changed what your role is and the role of your staff. Um, how has what you do as a department, um, has it shifted over these two years with the pandemic? Have priorities risen to the top? Are there other, I'm just curious how that has impacted your everyday work? 
Um, I think we were pretty well prepared for it because the board had already adopted the one-to-one -one initiative before the pandemic hit. So we had the devices and we were kind of used to um, everyone having a device and, and, and the urgency that comes along with that with, you know, if it breaks, where do they go to get an, a loaner or, um, you know, what happens if the internet goes down? <laughs> My phone rings immediately. <laughs> but um, we've, over the years, we've built in a lot of those redundancies. So we really haven't had a lot of downtime. Um, but, you know, things, things happen, but um, yeah, we're, we're really focused, super focused on security now, mm -hmm. um, keeping the internet up and running, that's number one priority, and then keeping our staff and student devices up and running. That's our main, and, and obviously the network, which um, nobody really ever mentions the network, but there's a lot of work that goes mm -hmm into that behind the scenes. It's all the wiring that you don't see. Mm -hmm. It's all the equipment you don't see or servers that you don't see. So yeah, it's that's that's our main focus. And I do know that in this upcoming year we'll have a and I forgive me, Dr. Grossman, I don't know exactly how it works. I know we're sharing with a position with the town that will be um, helping with the role that Mr. Croninger does a lot, but also other pieces. So um, hopefully that'll you guys have been busy um, and are busy, and I know Mr. Croninger missed a tennis match tonight that his two boys were playing in, I'm sure, so um, so thank you. Um, but does that help? It will alleviate? definitely okay. help, because we, I mean, um, that's one thing that kind of came out of the pandemic was the hybrid model mm -hmm. of meeting, where now we need Zoom and we need, um, you know, in person, and someone needs to know how to run the equipment, so. Um, yeah, we've been um, trying to cover that, you know, throughout because we, we didn't have anybody right. doing that. And before. it's new. We did never had to do right. that before. So. Yeah, and then more and more of the school events and things are streamed live now. Um, and, you know, I think the community expects that now. So, and it's great because if you can't go, you can still see it. Mm -hmm. In our greater community, that you know, grandparents who may live in other places or who can stream in these events. Right, or, especially yeah, like graduation will be on Zoom. Yeah, um, we have someone coming in to help us with that, so that'll be good. Great. But yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to anyone on the board and welcome Donna. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you were able to make it. Anybody else have any comments, comments or questions for Mr. Lambert? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for keeping so us much. Yes. And we really <laughs> greatly appreciate You're all of you. You're welcome. I, I try, to, try to keep it simple. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. We all do. Yeah. I, yeah. de I definitely appreciate those robotics kids. Yeah. They're awesome. They're they are awesome. They were awesome. I wish um, you should see that robot not in action. Oh, it's, it's, it's so impressive. impressive. I've it's watched so some impressive. of the competition. It's, it's it's intense. It is. Yeah. Really, it is. I, it's, it's wonderful. So I'm glad you were here to hear them as well. Think of them as future employees. <laughs> we, we love geeks. Yeah. Our, yeah. <laughs> we need the best ones. The world wouldn't function without them. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so we're doing all right here. Um, moving on to <laughs> first men. We have the superintendent's contract approval, which I will. Um, each year, the Grand Bay Board of Education conducts an evaluation of the superintendent of schools. This evaluation is based on the goals that the superintendent presented to the board at the beginning of the school year. For the 2021-22 school year, these goals were in the areas of student learning and achievement, community engagement, safety and social emotional well-being, budget development and fiscal management, embracing diversity, and professional learning. The Gravy Board of Education is pleased to report that our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jordan E. Grossman, has met or exceeded all of these goals. And with that, I would like to make a motion that the Gravy Board of Education approve the Superintendent's contract effective July 1st, 2022 through June 30, 2025. Second. Dave, thank you for the second. Any discussion? I just wanted to make a comment. I wanted to first thank uh, Dr. Grossman for all of his work for our district and for our kids. Um, you um, 
you are a great leader and you lead from the heart and it shows you have just as much enthusiasm as those robotics <laughs> kids that we saw today. Um, and, uh, and we appreciate it because it's infectious and you can see it trickle down to our, into our buildings. I mean, not only are you physically in the buildings, but uh, your leadership and your spirit is, it just, it's infectious and, and we see it. Um, you have gotten us through the pandemic. I know we've talked about that a lot, but um, we're not that far away that we shouldn't say it again, um, that you kept our schools open and running, our kids safe and learning, and um, you're hyper-focused on moving the district forward, um, and we appreciate it. So thank you for all you're doing. And we, uh, I, I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, but I think I can say we, we really look forward to working with you for a long time. Thank you. If I could. Of course. Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, join Rosemary in all of her comments as well, but uh, I want to emphasize how fortunate uh, Granby was to have you join us at the time that you did. Um, it was really uh, to, to have someone of your of your just seemingly boundless energy <laughs> join at a time when everything got enormously complicated very quickly. Um, you kept our kids safe, you kept our kids learning, and you kept them coming back which was phenomenal. It was phenomenal as, as you know, parents had to return to work or try to find ways to work. We knew our kids were safe in the building and uh, it's enormously appreciated. Thank you for that. Um, I also wanted to emphasize how you are always present. You're visible at every single school everywhere. You're not only showing up at games, concerts, plays, musicals. Um, it's my understanding that you've even been known to substitute a class from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is something that is just extremely rare and that we are extremely fortunate to have. So thank you for all that you give to Granby. It is, it is noticed and appreciated. If I might add as well, I agree with those sentiments. I especially appreciate your leadership getting us through the pandemic and keeping our children in school. But also you are focused on seeing our children succeed. You're focused on raising the level of education here in Granby. And as parents, most of us are parents of children in the school or students in the school system, we appreciate that because after all, that's what we're here for. So thank you, Dr. Grossman. And I'm glad that you will be here for the foreseeable future and then some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I may say, coming from the heart, I feel like you've really come in and um, become kind of a fabric of Granby. We're a funny little town, we're a <laughs> proud town, and um, you become a part of it. You know, like Monica mentioned, you're, you're everywhere. Um, you really understand what this town is and what our values are, um, and I think that's just a beautiful thing. And then coming from my head, um, you know, you've really took a good hard look at our schools and you've seen who we are, what we are, where we thrive, and you've encouraged that, and you've also been able to identify where we can grow and you've implemented those tools. And you've really encouraged everybody underneath you, alongside you, to really just grab onto those tools and move forward in a really positive way. So I just really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would echo that. I think everybody feels grateful. We've had your steady hand, your experience hand on the tiller through the storm. But I think the best is yet to come. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I would say I think one of the things that's gonna allow us to continue to be successful is even through the pandemic, um, you did have an eye on the future and for us to have a plan for the future. So we didn't spend our time being reactionary during the pandemic. Um, we lived in the moment that we always, so you always had the eye on the future. And so the fact that you've always continued to be proactive, um, I think that's something that the community really appreciates. So as we've come out of the pandemic, we're not just, we didn't look through the, ne the next couple of months. We've already got our plan, um, not only for next year, but the years going forward um, and, and that is very much appreciated and I think that's something that we've been able to hang on to and know that we were going to continue to move forward as we need to so thank you all of you were so good I had to write down my comments <laughs> so thank you Dr. Grossman for serving our schools and our community with excellence you are responsive ever present proactive accessible, you work tirelessly, and you hold high standards for yourself, your staff, and our students. People know you, and you know them, whether at community events, statewide professional meetings, or walking the halls of our schools. 
and you just might be the most competitive person I know. <laughs> you don't like to lose, there is no such thing as second place, and you bring that drive to everything that you do. So I'm truly grateful to have you as Granby Superintendent of Schools, and I as well look forward to this being a very long tenure with the Granby Public Schools, so thank you. So, well, thank you. <laughs> You're all too kind. As I said when I reported on my goals, it, it's been the, the professional honor of my life to serve the, the, the Granby Public Schools, and I was very deliberate when I came here, um, knowing that um, I want this to be my career-ending position, and, and I still got a long run to go. And each board member that I've been able to work with that's made this work really worthwhile. But it, it, it's kids like that, that that's what we're here for. And, and the, the past two weeks have not been easy in, in education uh, uh, across our country. And I've had to make some decisions in the past two weeks that um, were hard, but always had the best interest of children and our community and our staff um, at the core. Um, what makes this, this is hard work, but what makes this work a little bit easier is having a supportive Board of Education and how you unite together in the best interests of children, that will make this work last not only for years, but for generations to come. Because the work that we do we have to make sure that we are legacy leaders and that we're building for our kids that may not even be in school yet. So I, I thank you. Your support, your words are, are too kind. Um, and it makes it, it much easier coming to work every single day on the behalf of children, knowing that we have a board of education that supports a, a superintendent of schools in, in this team that we have of dedicated individuals that work with our children every day. And I've said this numerous times, it, it, it's been two and a half years and it, it feels like 10. Um, realizing that this community has been wonderful, not only to myself, um, but to my family. My family walks around, Granby goes to games, goes to events, and everybody treats them well. And, and that's important. Because if that didn't happen, because I always said in my interview process, I'm a package and I come with two young children and a former, former Granby Memorial High School grad, so I better take care of Granby because <laughs> I, I would hear about it. So thank you. Your, your words are too kind. Thank you. And with that, we do have a motion on the table. So with that, I call for a vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And no opposition and no abstentions. And I'm glad you referenced your family, Dr. Grossman, because we're all into making new traditions on this Board of Education. <laughs> so um, I started, I wanted to start one tonight, and I did this privately before, but then everyone said, oh, you should do it in public. So I know that um, you dedicate hours and hours and hours of your time to Granby's families and Granby's children. And so on behalf of the Board of Education for your family, because every time you're with our families, you're probably not with your family. So please take these home to your family um, as thanks from us for sharing you with us. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, too kind. <laughs> and, so, and thank you to Karina and Brayden and Gabriella for sharing thank with us. So thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So we will move on, thank you, to the Curriculum Policy Technology <laughs> Communication <laughs> Committee. Dave. Really gotta work on that name. I know. <laughs> we gotta get an acronym for us. It's too long. Right. an acronym. Uh, <clears throat> we met tonight from 535 to 640. We had no public comment. Um, the minutes were not reviewed because I left them at home on my desk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll bring them next time. Uh, we had the assistant superintendent's report. In addition to the items that Sherry mentioned, uh, they're well underway with the hiring process and the revision of the schedules for next year. They just completed a learning walk, uh, which is when administrators or teams go around and basically observe classrooms and then use the, what their observations to inform their professional development. Uh, there was discussion about a townwide composting initiative. 
the uh, summer enrichment um, program is back to sort of pre-COVID style classes and they're looking to improve the enrollment there. And uh, there's some curriculum work going on in the health and language departments. And there was also a uh, pretty good discussion around the role of the board relative to curriculum revision and review. Great. Thank you, Dave. Are there any questions or comments for Dave and the curriculum committee? Okay. Thank you. Finance personnel facilities did not meet tonight. However, their approved minutes were in your packet and they will meet again in two weeks um, prior to our next board meeting and our final board meeting of the school year. Other board re related reports, I have nothing from Kate. Christina, I don't know if you have heard from Crack or not. Still have not heard from Okay, that. well we will follow up on that. <laughs> um, Grandy Education Foundation. I we will be meeting June 20th, and if I can just say, because we won't have any more board of ed meetings until the fall. Well, well, after the meeting. Um, as the summer comes, the teachers are getting excited and planning new initiatives for the school year. Feel free to encourage them to always come to us for grants. Um, they're very excited to put forth new ideas and support them financially. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, calendar of events is attached. Uh, again, the end of the year, so there's an awful lot going on. Uh, there's stepping moving up ceremonies and graduation so um, please check that and if you are a board member interested in attending graduation please let mrs. Powell know um, board member announcements I'm gonna take the microphone here because Jacob this is gonna be all about you right now oh <laughs> so I um, because we you weren't able to join us um, during our student rep announcements I wanted to be sure to recognize you um, as you may know, serving on the Granby Board of Education is a volunteer position. Our members balance this commitment with their other responsibilities, families, jobs, additional volunteer service and commitments. Our student representatives are no exception. They also come, they come to these meetings willingly and represent <laughs> the student voice while also balancing their academically challenging classes, sports, the arts, extracurricular activities, student government, community service, after school jobs and internships, and honestly, anything else that may be asked of them or available to them. And you two are certainly both a testament to that. Jacob Scotto has faithfully served as a Granby Memorial High School student representative to the Granby Board of Education for the past two years, helping to guide and advise us on student, per on student perspective and impact during probably the most difficult time in education. In addition, he has been a star on the stage earning distinction for and starring in multiple roles he played in such drama productions as Grease, Mamma Mia, and most recently, Damn Yankees. His performance doesn't stop there as he has been a committed member of both our student choir and our beloved chamber singers and has been honored as a three-time Northern Regional Choir and a two-time All-State Choir. Am I doing okay so far? Yes. I got it. <laughs> I had some help. <laughs> so, um, Jacob. Thank you for your contributions, not only to the Board of Education, but also to the greater Granby community. I certainly hope this experience encourages you to return to Granby, where perhaps you may decide to run for the Board of Education, or maybe some other office, because you certainly would have my vote. On a personal level, I wanted to thank you for your willingness to speak up and to provide valuable insight. I always enjoyed hearing your thoughts and appreciated that you spoke with purpose, not never just to speak. Jacob will be moving on to his next adventure at Villanova University in Pennsylvania. So Jacob, go ahead and open this as a thanks um, on behalf of the Board of Education for serving us the past few years. And you're the only family member that can use that. Just right. <laughs> and you can only put water in it. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Jacob, we will definitely miss you. Um, congratulations. I'm really excited to be handing you your diploma next week. Thank you. And I'll try not to cry. <laughs> Are there any other board member announcements? Um, any action items? Don, I know you were I, I listened car. the whole way. Okay. I did not hear any action items, but if I'm remiss, please let me I think we know. just need to get in touch with CREC um, to make yeah. sure that yes. you're on their email. So um, I know we've contacted them already, but we shall circle back and make sure that at the very least. I did check okay. before the meeting just to make sure I wasn't missing something. But. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we do actually have need for a quick executive session tonight um, to discuss collective bargaining. So with that, I would ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. 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 Thank you, Donna. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you.